Wow. I am not bottoming out at all on any of this stuff. Maintaining good traction and uh, wheels to the road or alley here. So the aftermarket suspension industry for Harley-Davidson is huge. A lot of different choices. And I will say that obviously stock suspension on a Harley absolutely sucks. So changing out your suspension for something better is one of the best things you can do for the overall rideability of your Harley-Davidson motorcycle. So over the past 10 years on this channel, we've had the opportunity to uh, install and review many different suspensions, just to name some of them, uh, your top brands like Legends, Progressive, and Olings. So in our hands for this review is Wilbur's suspension. We're gonna take a look at it and see how it stacks up to the other leading aftermarket brands. Is it the best? Does it break even or does it fall short? Stick around. Welcome back, bikeaholics. Ryan Erdocker here, lawbuddingbiker.com. I always thank you. That's right, you for checking back in. So the first thing we want to look at is, you know, the overall quality of the suspension we got out of the box and of course, kind of the install process. So we're going to head to the shop in a minute and do that. And then at the end, I'll actually review it and test ride it and give you my opinions. All right. And interestingly, uh, this came in the kit also. And uh, honestly, the zero friction oil, I wasn't sure uh, if I put this in the nightstand or if this goes in the forks. And I'll just say, you know, this is beefy. Uh, I felt a lot, of, a lot of different suspensions and there's some good weight to this. Straight up legit. If you look at the size difference between the stock and this super beefy Wilbur's, no comparison. All right, I will say having the bike on a lift, awesome for projects like this. This is a Titan lift. We've got a bunch of different options. We do sell them right in the Law Abiding Biker store. I'll link in the description below because we got a mini jack we're gonna use here in a minute. We're gonna install the front and rear suspension rather quickly. Now, I'm gonna put some videos in the description below for you. We've done very detailed videos on how to get your front suspension installed, rebuild forks, uh, remove those forks, and of course, get that rear on. Again, links in the description below because this installs the same exact way. Lurk, stop. Come time. Before we get wrenching, Make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon every time those are hit another biker joins the revolution we'd love to have you be part of it our titan mini jack on our titan lift taking just a little pressure off before we remove the bolts from the rear shocks pretty easy that's how your shocks come off on both sides two shocks see the difference this one goes on the right side of the bike that's the nitrogen screw don't with it we're using your same hardware i put a little blue loctite on this i got my handy torque wrench tried and tested here uh these are really handy i'll link to them in the description below no additional cost to you if you click through make a purchase we do get a commission nice because they it's set to uh, 35 to 40 foot pounds for these two and uh, it gives a nice audible tone and a visual of where we're at if i didn't mention when you order these uh they come pretty much set for your weight and what you're gonna do, but you do need to fine tune them and also set sag. Now I've got a very detailed video already out on everything you need to know about adjusting sag and preload. To make this really easy, a test sliding sag scale makes it really easy. It's got millimeters on here and inches. Sold right in the Law Abiding Biker store, link to it in the description below. So there is too much preload on this bike, meaning I'm only sagging 10 millimeters. And so we need to remove some preload on that shock to get that full 20 millimeters of sag. You gotta be freaking kidding me. Uh, no. First try, that never happens either. All right, and as far as the left side, uh, you don't need to do anything or adjust anything. All right, and onwards to the front springs and spacers. And Lurch can't wait to try out the zero friction oil later tonight. Not with me. And we start here with front wheel removal because we're going to have to remove the forks. Very detailed video we already have out on front wheel and fork removal links. Again, description below. Going up. These handy little brake caliper hooks. I'll link to them in the description below. Super handy. You can hook them around anything and you can uh, make sure they're not banging on your fender and keep these out of the way. All right, time for some zero friction Wilbur's oil. Might save some of this. Working this up and down. Oh, zero friction. 
<laughs> this is... I still feel friction. An air gap measuring tool, link to it in the description below. It's set at 110 millimeters, so I'm basically gonna put it in and I can kind of see down in there. I'm gonna try to get it to the top of this. If I go over, we're just gonna suck the rest out. Take our spring, these are progressive springs. You see the bottom to the top, the springs are farther apart at the bottom, tighter at the top. Always put the tight end up with Wilbur's. Perfect torque. Four hand pounds. <laughs> Getting closer to being done so we can uh, check the suspension out and test ride it. All right, if you guys are interested in getting hooked up with Wilbur suspension, I will link to it in the description below. Uh, by going through that link in some way, it will support our mission to continue to help educate and entertain as many bikers as we can worldwide. We appreciate your support. All right, Lurch has made an absolute disaster mess well, whatever, of the, the shop. Mentioned. Tools everywhere. We're gonna get this stuff cleaned up, Lurch. You know why? because we got some suspension to test ride. Yeah, buddy. Can't wait. Let a match, let it go. The fire cash explode. Blow your mind one more time. Hurricane running through my veins. I'm buck wild, honey time. Well, I officially got Wilbur's to bottom out. I will say that's an excessive test. Fun nonetheless. All right, just real quick, we'll get right back into your video. As you can imagine, a ton of man hours and expenses go into keeping this channel going strong. We're just trying to help as many bikers as we can worldwide. There is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member, and I'll link to it in the description below. There are benefits for signing up, such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone. It really is nothing but bikers helping and connecting with other bikers. You get access to podcasts early, live video broadcasts and chat, premium videos, and of course, access to those ride, meetup, and events. We really appreciate you considering becoming a member. All right, let's get back into your video. Okay, so let's face it, there's a lot of opinions out there, especially when it comes to suspension and other things when it comes to the Harley industry. And you'll see some guys say, Wilbur's is absolutely the best suspension. It is God of suspension. And then you'll hear same with the Olings and Progressive and things like that. The issue comes up that I see is a lot of those folks that are commenting haven't actually tested all the different brands of suspension and they're just simply basing it from stock to Wilbur's or stock to Olings. Where I differ is I have a ton of experience riding many different aftermarket suspensions over the years, of course, including stock on my police bike. On my Street Glide Special, my 14, I have Olings front and rear suspension and I've ridden that over 8,000 miles now. Yes, I've ridden progressive and we've done the legend. So I can actually give a comparison between all of those. And of course, not everybody has the same budget. At the end of the day, I can tell you, all four of these, uh, what you choose to spend your money on and how much you wanna spend is going to be a great improvement over stock. So we're gonna get a little bit into that, comparing suspension quality and ride, and also take into account affordability. We're gonna give you some choices. So let's get right to pricing and get that out of the way because these different suspensions we're gonna talk about do vary a bit. I will say from my experience, I've learned that the more you spend, the better the suspension and ride is. I do wanna say real quick that yes, we do carry Olings and Progressive in the Law Abiding Biker store right now. We're hoping to bring Wilbur's to the store. At any rate, we will have links in the description below to everything. So with the pricing, we're talking about front and rear setups. Progressive, you know, entry level, great suspension, coming in at 1400. Lurch is actually running that on his 2015 Rogue Glide and loves it. And then moving up to Legends, you're coming in at about 1800. Yes, I have some experience with Legends. I will say the last time we dealt with them, uh, their customer service was a bit less than satisfactory. So I hope they've resolved that. And moving into the Olings, of course, that I'm running on my Street Glide Special and the Wilbers that we put on the CVO coming in at 2000, so at that upper end. So Lurch and I headed out to actually test the Wilbur suspension and we rode a lot of different uh, roads, dirt, alleys, potholes, uh, train tracks, everything we could to really test the suspension. So 
is Wilbur's the best? So that's obviously a bit of a loaded question, but there's some things we need to talk about and compare. So of course, I wish I could give you a really easy answer, but I'm gonna break it down for you and give you my thought process and where I'm coming from having tested it. I will say that uh, obviously Wilbur's immediately, it definitely is better a ride than Progressive. Uh, better than Legends. But again, both of those suspensions are great. And again, it's how much you can spend. I don't want to go down that road, but what I'm going to do here is compare Wilbur's to Olings. We're kind of going to stick to that because they're really neck and neck and I'll tell you why. So before I talk about the ride of Wilbur's, let's talk about what it has that Oling suspension doesn't. And so Wilbur's big claim to fame is their self-leveling technology. And what I mean is uh, we installed the suspension on the CVO here. And then of course, because I was test riding, we set the sag uh, to my weight. The nice thing about the Wilbur's and that self-leveling is uh, once you get out and ride for you know a short distance, it self-levels. And so if I were to put luggage on or a passenger, I don't need to go back in like I do, uh, well, with the Olings and many other suspensions and then adjust the preload again manually, this self-levels. So you can run a passenger, run luggage, and then when they aren't on anymore, it self-levels again just to the rider so you don't have to constantly make those adjustments. So kudos to Wilbur's for that. So let's talk about what Olings has that Wilbur's doesn't. So the Wilbur's kit, when we installed it, is like a lot of other aftermarket kits uh, up front in the forks. It's simply a progressive spring, and a spacer, which definitely improves the ride. So the thing I really like about my Olings is it's a cartridge system up front in the forks. And it also allows me to adjust preload up front along with compression and rebound dampening. The Wilbur's, it is what it is. You put the spring in the spacers and that's it. So I feel like Olings up front gives me a lot more adjustability uh, whether I want it stiffer or softer and the rebound for my riding style. And I will just mention that the way Wilbur's works up front is when you order, they send you the right spring, the spacer and oil level for your weight, but that's where it stays. Additionally, the Olings I'm running on my Street Glide have rebound dampening adjustment in the rear where Wilbur's does not have that. Again, it does self-level, which is really nice, uh, where my Olings, I actually have to manually adjust if I'm going to carry a bunch of gear or a passenger. All right, so rideability is what everybody's wondering between Wilbur's and Olings. I'll do my best to give you my experience. Okay, so when I first went out riding the Wilbur's, uh, we were just riding regular roads at first. It definitely is legit suspension right out of the gate. It felt soft. In, in a good way. Uh, I didn't feel like it was floaty, um, you know, where you get this kind of movement. It was definitely soft, but uh, good rebound and absorbed things well. So we took it to the, you know, really rough roads and alleys and potholes and, you know, cruising along, trying to hit everything that I could. And uh, I will tell you that I was pleasantly surprised because I thought because it was so soft, it may be a little floaty, um, but it, it isn't. All I can say, uh, is that it's definitely refined. It does give you the sense of, of being soft, but it's not too soft. Um, as far as the rebound going through those bumps, I was really happy uh, with the way the rebound performed. And I can say out of all of the stuff that we put the Wilbers through, uh, not once did it bottom out. Now, obviously I hit some big potholes, that's normal. And you know, the rebound uh, popped me out of the seat a little bit. Um, of course, I was expecting that, but night and day compares to something like, you know, my uh, Electroglide, 18 Electroglide with stock suspension on my police bike. I ride a lot of those same alleys. And uh, although I can do it at the same speed, I'm definitely standing up and have my butt a little off the seat. And it is a pretty violent ride when you're going through that. So it really just performed amazing. And I'll definitely say it's a premium suspension and I can't imagine anybody would be disappointed if they install it on their bike. So we know Wilbur's is premium. It's going to perform uh, better than a lot of the other stuff out there. Definitely better than stock. But having ridden my Olings 8,000 miles and through a lot of the same types of environments, how does the Olings stack up to Wilbur's? Which is better? So all I can tell you is that they are neck and neck. Wilbur's is amazing. 
Oling's absolutely amazing. Um, I can say the rideability of Oling's feels just a little bit less, I don't want to say soft because it's not jarring. You really feel like this is going to be floaty, the Wilbur's. I don't know how to put that into words. It's not, but it might be just a little bit softer. But with that said, it doesn't have any, it's self-leveling. Um, I can force my Olings into, uh, with the adjustments, I can force it to either be stiffer um, or softer, depending on how I want that to feel, both front and back. So you have to take that into account too. But both of these suspensions are amazing. But all I can say is that, uh, you know, they both come in at that same price point and uh, you're gonna be happy with either. All right, I'm popping a couple cards on the screen here for you. Hopefully something useful or entertaining. Heck, maybe both. At any rate, when you're done watching videos on the channel, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get, Bikeaholics. Peace.